Well, everybody, I'm more or less calling it here. I don't think the DigiBro channel is coming back. When it initially was taken down for the second time, um, I didn't get any notifications as to why. The only reason I knew it was from copyright strikes is because I went to my channel and it said so there. The closest thing I have to a reason for why the channel went down is because in the brief time it was up, I had submitted counter notifications on the two strikes that I already had against my account, both from, uh, I know one was Tokyo Broadcasting and something else for my k -On video that I had tried to upload twice and both times it got strikes. I had submitted counter notifications on the two strikes and the the rules that YouTube presents you with is that if it, if they don't respond if the if the studio or whoever made the claim doesn't respond in 10 days then the strikes get pulled and you get your channel back but if they do respond then they it's considered a legal action and they can sue you based on it um what it doesn't say or at least what I didn't read I guess I wasn't paying attention possibly is that uh, if the counter notifications fail, it's also possible that they'll just terminate your YouTube channel or suspend it. So, I think that's probably what happened. I think I probably submitted those two counter notifications and then they got they, they got rejected and the channel got suspended. That's the only logical explanation considering I've got no emails, no information, no nothing. So, what I've been doing for the last 10 days is hoping that um, once 10 days had passed since submitting those counter notifications, maybe they would go through. Maybe the studio didn't respond. Maybe it was the channel was pulled for unrelated reasons or was just pulled in the meantime while they figure it out and that it would come back after 10 days. Well, today's the 10th day, so unless it's just too early in the day for me to know for sure or um, or possibly it comes back tomorrow magically or some other day magically this could most likely be the end of the digibro channel which sucks in every possible way but at the same time um, it's not the death of me or my content uh, it doesn't doesn't completely affect my ability to create this content or to live off of this content even because I really get paid through patreon so, from here on out, what I'm going to do is mostly reconsider the way I've been doing things. Because, see, with the Digibro channel, what I lose, what I lose by losing the channel, I lose all the comments, all the subscribers, all the hits that I had. Um, basically, anything that, that was like status on YouTube, I lost. That's, that's the best way to put it. I lost my YouTube status. Anything I had that I could only get through YouTube, I lose with the channel. And the reason that it matters a lot to me, the reason that I made the videos the way I did, because you'll notice that my videos were constantly evolving in ways to try to get past content ID. Everything I did with the visuals in my videos was, how can I get this past content ID? And the reason is that, uh... I never took the visual element of my videos that seriously, except in cases where it was really important. Um, to me, I always considered myself to be a writer who was just writing full-on articles and then just reading them into a microphone and throwing some visuals on top of it because of the fact that people only watch videos these days. You can make money off of videos, you can make a career off of videos, it's much harder to do that off of text unless you write for some kind of publication and then you have to, you know, fit in with their rules. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do my style and to be able to make a career off of it, doing exactly things the way exactly I wanted them to be. So the video thing was sort of an afterthought, although there are times where I've put more effort into certain videos or where I considered the video component more important, but other times it was more of just a vehicle to get the content out there. So as such, what was most important to me was that the, the videos be able to be posted on YouTube so that they could get the most spread. Because back when I did My Little Pony content, the way that my channel got so big, the reason it has 83,000 subscribers, or had, even though it uh, obviously not nearly that many people were watching the videos, is because back when I did pony content, the channel got really big. And it did so through pretty much the exact same means that PewDiePie got big, albeit on a much smaller scale. If you've never seen the video by Game Theory about why PewDiePie got so big, I highly recommend watching it. But basically they explain the algorithms that YouTube goes through. And uh, 
my channel was around at just the right time where I was putting out videos at the perfect rate and they were the type of videos that people would click through and watch more of my content because it would all show up in the sidebar. And so I started showing up in the sidebar of other pony videos and then people would get to my channel and watch all my videos and it would just promote my channel naturally through the YouTube algorithm. And it also happened that this was right at the time that YouTube changed their design when like everything went to the, the one channel or whatever it was called. When they did all the Google Plus changes, that was like a huge wellspring of hits for a lot of people because people who were making the right content at the right time at that moment jumped up in subscribers and I was one of those. So it was really a right place, right time kind of scenario. And uh, I've always been trying to sort of ride that wave again with anime, but the truth is it's never really panned out that way. Even though I've put out content really quickly, even more quickly than I did with Pony, where with Pony it was two to three videos a week. There were times when I was doing anime and just posting a video every day all month. And uh, it never really got algorithm support. My channel, like, I never got exponentially more views. I never really showed up in the sidebars of other anime channels, at least not for a while. Um, just in general, it didn't work out the same way. Partly, it really has everything to do with the anime fandom and how it's different from Pony fandom, where Pony fans are all watching the same show and they all see everything. So if you make a video about My Little Pony, it will be relevant to everyone who's into the show no matter what, because they all know what you're talking about. Anime fandom is so scattershot that I could make a video about one show that everyone's seen and one show that no one's seen, and, you know, the hits will reflect that. So it's less of a cohesive fandom. There's less of, like, a... Like, like everyone sees the same content, whereas with Pony, everyone follows Equestria daily and sees everything that comes out there. Whereas with anime, you just gotta be lucky and have people share your video enough. So really, me trying to game the YouTube algorithm was really not working out anyways. And uh, I think that my problem was trying to still make content that fits in YouTube. I was trying to, you know, make all my, make all my videos work on YouTube, and to do that I had to make them uglier and less appealing. Whereas the channels that are really big, when it comes to anime especially, all have really appealing looking content. Demolition D videos are gorgeous because he edits them so well and he uses full screen footage. Uh, almost everyone uses full screen footage. I have no idea how. I don't know how anyone gets away with it because I can't even get past like basic content ID shit unless I, you know, fuck with the video. Um, so I don't know how people keep getting their full screen videos up, but um, the point is that most of the big channels had a lot of full screen, and some of them were getting taken down. Misty Cronexia got took down, uh, Demolition D has been taken down before, and he's dealt with lots of copyright issues. So it's not like they don't face anything, it's just amazing to me that they even get past the uploading stage with a lot of those videos. But uh, when it comes to anime, people want to see pretty stuff. They don't want to see, like, you know, this ugly, fucked up version of the video that someone's commentating over in a sort of boring way. It's just not that appealing. And so I think the videos were not getting word of mouth spread because of the fact that they're they're not as accessible. They're not flashy and pretty. They don't grab your attention. There's not a lot of editing because I'm just worried about getting them past YouTube censors and getting them out there. Um, and not worried about making it a more enjoyable video experience. So in other words, what I plan to do, because now that Digibro's dead, it's it's obvious to me that I was just, I was fighting a losing battle that I was never gonna win. Not only because it wasn't really working out with the statistics, I wasn't really getting exponentially more hits, but also because YouTube fucked me anyway, where even though I was trying to get past the content stuff, I still got copyright strikes on multiple videos, I still got um, plenty, I had plenty of problems, I, I got flagged for no reason, my video got taken down. There's so many ways that YouTube can fuck with you that like trying to be careful is not really helpful. Ultimately the channel is still died, even though I was trying so hard to get all my videos past the censor and, uh, and get them out there. So I think that what I need to do now is completely change the methodology. Instead of worrying about making stuff to fit into YouTube, I'm just gonna make the best possible products and then release them however the fuck I can. So what that would mean is, let's say I, I made a video where I use full screen footage, I, I edit it to make it look nice, and then I'll just upload it everywhere I can and then tell everyone about it. 
Now, the way this could work is that um, what, I, what I'm mostly concerned about is that my videos have to survive in some form, right? They have to, they have to be around on the internet. They don't necessarily all need to be in one place. They just need to exist. They need. I need my my patrons to be able to find my videos. I need other people. I want. I want them to to be around on the internet. I don't want them to ever just disappear and no one has a copy of it. You know. So what I'll probably do is release my down release my videos to multiple um upload stations like Vimeo, Vo, wherever the fuck I can, anywhere that works, anywhere that'll take the fucking video. Daily Motion, YouTube. You know, not everything gets taken down. I'll release it everywhere, put out a video like this, where I'm just like, hey guys, I made a video. Here's 90 places you can try to watch it. And then I'll also have a download link. So that even if the video gets taken down everywhere, there will still be somewhere you can download the damn thing just to watch it. So, no matter what, my videos will exist. And then, it's all about word of mouth from there. It's all about, is the content good enough to stand on its own? Fuck YouTube's algorithm. Fuck whatever I need to, whatever that bullshit. The content will have to stand on its own and be good enough that people will share it. What this should mean is, my videos get better. They might get less frequent, but they get better. And if they get better, more people will be willing to patron them because the overall quality will be higher. People will feel it's more worth their money. More people will find out about me through word of mouth. More people might share the videos in, in communities. Because I feel like a lot of the videos I intended to be very shareable. Like when I did the, the top 20 anime of 2014, I was thinking I'd present each show in a way that fans of that show could take that video and show it to their friends and be like, here's what's great about this show, um, here's why you should go watch it. But because the footage was so ugly, because I had the TV screen and all that, it doesn't really make for a good advertisement for the show. You know, like, that was the whole point, was to advertise these shows, but they don't really look pretty because I'm trying to force them past YouTube's uh, copyright shit. So, in the end, I think the content will be better, people will be more willing to share it, people will care about it more, if it's the highest possible quality content that it can be, and it's it's shared through word of mouth instead of trying to game YouTube algorithms. So, Digibro's dead. Um, if you want to follow me on YouTube, Digi Does Anime will be the main hub for for things. I'm going to, or maybe I already have before this video came out, because otherwise you might lose this video. I'm going to make public every video on Digi Does Anime. So you've probably just gotten like. 200 videos in your subscription feed sorry about that um, but that's gonna be the main hub for people discovering me on YouTube I'll post my vid either my videos there or links to the videos where you can watch them there depending on what gets past YouTube's uh, content ID sensors and if that channel goes down this one will still be around I, I have like 10 channels so I'll always be somewhere on YouTube but what's most important to me is that my content just is out there and survives and people find out about it. Follow me on Twitter because that won't go anywhere. They can't, well, they can, but they probably won't do anything to me on there. Um, so if, you, if you're always following the Twitter, you'll always know where I am. You'll always know what I'm doing. My, my videos will always be on Twitter. You know, I'll link them there and you'll be able to find them. Um, or my blog, my blog, my sword is unbelievably dull.wordpress.com. Whatever video links exist will always be there because I, I post the text vo versions of my videos there So I can easily just put every link to every upload of the video on my blog So follow the blog follow the Twitter follow digi does anime. That's where the contents gonna be Digi bro is probably dead if it comes back great I'll 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 post stuff there because it's it's got way more subscribers obviously I will um, and you'll all know if it comes back but for now this is what we're dealing with, this is where we're going, so hopefully in the end, what doesn't kill me only makes me stronger.